What's up guys and welcome back to another eBay miniature rescue. Today we're going to talk about the Sotar 2020 airbrush and my thoughts about it so far. So I picked up this 2022F for $115 on Amazon and it comes with a fine tipped needle. I think that's like a 0.2 or 0.25 millimeter. So it's pretty small. And the idea behind that is you can get in pretty tight and get really, really controlled small spray patterns. So, I mean, this thing will go up to an inch wide, you know, full bore, um, which you don't really need too often. I mean, half the time our miniatures are, what, like an inch wide at the most for standard troops. So this is really great for mini painting in particular. So let's talk about some of the things that I really like about this airbrush. First of all, that needle size is really nice, and it definitely lends itself to painting minis. Some of the other things I like are the construction. It feels sturdy, like I'm not just going to break it. And it feels really nice in the hand. They have this kind of ergonomic grip on the bottom that came with it, and it's way more comfortable than the Master Series G233 that I've been using for the last year and a half. So that's a really huge plus, just right out of the box. This felt much better and I could go for a lot longer airbrushing and not really you know, feel it in my hand. It feels very natural. Another thing that I really liked about this brush is that the trigger and the spring inside are very, I don't wanna say sensitive, but they feel smooth, very, very smooth. And you know, when you're trying to just get small bursts or you know, you're really trying to control that airflow, it makes it really easy. You know, it's not just an on and off kind of thing. Like the master has a little bit of control to it, but it's not nearly as much as this. So this is, you know, it's meant for fine details and it really feels like that too. You just kind of feather the trigger back and it works very nicely. I'm also a big fan of how they have the needle arranged on this brush. It's really easy access right out of the back. You don't have to take anything off. And you know, traditionally on every other airbrush, you're pretty much going to take the back off and never use it again, just so you have easy access to that needle. And that's not the case here, which is pretty refreshing, honestly. All right, so let's get to some of the things that I'm not a huge fan of with this airbrush. And honestly, there are only a couple of things and they're probably minor in the long run, but here we go. The first thing is that there isn't any kind of cover for the needle on the tip. So if you happen to drop it or something happens, you will bend that needle almost immediately. It's pretty soft metal and it's probably going to happen. And a new needle is straight up 20, $25. Now they did include two needles in the box, um, which I'm pretty thankful for because you just never know. And I'd hate to have to order one and be down an airbrush, you know, for three or four days. But it's something to be aware of. And while they do sell a tip that goes over that, it's not a fully enclosed one. So kind of bringing up the second issue is backflowing. In order to do that, you have to pinch the needle and it works just fine, but you'll probably stab yourself. I did three or four times before I remembered, yes, this airbrush doesn't have a cap, stop stabbing yourself. And like I said earlier, it's a minor gripe and they do sell a tip cover separately for, I think, $15, $20. But, you know, it would have been nice to have that included so that it felt a little bit more like a regular airbrush and stabbing didn't happen. So, obviously, the downsides to this airbrush are probably more due to my personal experiences than anything else, but they're definitely things to think about. Mostly the not having the needle covered is an issue and I think that you know Badger should have included that cover in with this airbrush you know it kind of feels like oh yeah you might break it so give us an extra 15 bucks so that doesn't happen and you know that kind of feels like you're getting sold to and, and it's it's not the best feeling in the world you know when you're spending a decent amount of money on something so what it comes down to is would I recommend this airbrush to someone who's, you know, trying to branch out and spend a little bit more money on an airbrush than, you know, your $20, $30 master or no name brand. And unfortunately, 
The answer is no. I wouldn't recommend this as your first or second airbrush. While I've had a pretty good experience with this, and I've gotten some really nice results, I think it doesn't quite have the versatility that you may want when you're really just getting into airbrushing for the first time. I'd say that for the investment and the eventual investment in replacement parts, needles, and the cover, you might as well just save up the 20 or $30 extra and purchase something that's more of a workhorse that is, you know, it's a lot more varied. You can do different things with it, like an Iowata Eclipse. And if you're looking for something around the same price that isn't necessarily a tactical nuke of an airbrush, I would recommend the Badger Patriot. What I mean by tactical nuke is that this airbrush is pretty situational. It's really, really good at getting into the fine details and you've got a nice spray pattern and you can do short bursts to build up color in a very nice way. But when it comes down to it, it just doesn't work as well as an everyday all around brush. So you might find yourself wanting something a little bit bigger or something that does something just a little bit different. And in certain times you're gonna say, wow, I really need something that's gonna do this one thing. And that's where the Sotar really shines, is it's really good at doing that one thing that you need it to do when you need it. And that unfortunately means it's, you know, a really good tool to have, but you're not always gonna want it. And if you're gonna spend the money on a nicer brush, you're probably gonna want something that you're happy with 90% of the time, instead of something that, you know, works and you can make it work, but you're not the most happy with. That being said, if you are looking for something that does fine detail really, really well and isn't terribly hard to maintain, you know, if you've had some experience maintaining airbrushes, that kind of thing, then this is a good tool to have. And for around a hundred bucks on Amazon, it's not a bad price point either.